In this video, we'll be finding a general formula for the Frobenius number of two numbers and proving that formula. So, let's see what we did in this example first. So we had two numbers to begin with, 5 and 7. So we're going to call it two numbers, n and m. And we're going to arbitrarily let n be greater than m. And so now, remember what we did in this example? We set, we wrote this uh, blue, we wrote this, we wrote this blue formula down. So it's going to be m times a plus n times b equals k. And that's the general statement of the problem. Now remember what we did. We broke up the bigger number, the 7b, into smaller parts. We broke it up into a 5b and a 2b. So I used a 5 because I saw the 5 here and I wanted to group it. So the same thing we'll do here. We'll say, um, we'll say m a plus m plus some p, I'll define the p, b. That's now the problem that we're going to deal with. And p is equal to n minus m. So now we're going to split this up. We're going to say m a plus m b plus p b. Group the m. So m a plus b plus p b. So this is our new problem. And you can see this new problem is the same as the old problem because p is just n minus m. So you get, you would, if you expanded this out, you would just get m a plus n b again. <coughs> okay. So now, the next step we did was we let b equal certain things. So we're going to get rid of this paper. I'm just going to do general. So now we have a general statement of the problem here. So first we let b equal 0. Let's do that. Let's say b equals 0. That's our case number 1. So if b equals 0, then you just get m a. And a can be any number, right? Because we said a and b are natural numbers. So m a. So we can form all m a. Now let b equals 1. So now we have m a plus 1 plus p. Right? So now a can a plus 1 can be anything except 0. So we can form all m times k plus p except p. Right? Because p is what we get when a plus 1 equals 0 and that's not possible. And we'll do one more, one more case. So let's let b equals 2. So then we get m times a plus 2 plus 2p. And a plus 2 cannot equal 0, cannot equal 1. So we can form all mk plus 2p. All right, we can form all of those because 2p is the remainder this time. We can form all those except when this is 0, this is 2p. This is 1, this would be m plus 2p. Right? So we can go on and on and on there. We don't know how many cases there are, but we know the last case is going to be when we have um, if b, remember when we did the 5 and the 7? The last case was when b equals to 4. And why was that? Because then we had completed 5 cases. We had completed the cases where we had 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So in this case, how many cases do we have? So our coefficient is m, and like it was 5 last time. So it's m. So starting with 0, 1, 2, dot, 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 our last case is when we let b equal m minus 1. Remember the last example, m was 5, so b was 4. So now just generally, m minus 1. Let's just use the same methodology. So these dot, dot, dot indicate all the cases in between. So now we're going to let m and b equals m, so it's going to be a plus m minus 1 plus, and we're going to say p times m minus 1. So we're going to use the same thing. So we can form all, all of these, essentially, except, but, so this can't take which values? It can't take 0, 1, 2, dot, 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 and more generally, it can't take which values? It can't be m minus 2, because if this was m minus 2, a would be negative 1, and the smallest it can be is 0. So we can form m minus 1, but we can't let it be m minus 2. So, but when, um, but for example, so when it's 0, we can't form m plus p times p minus, times m minus 1 dot, 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 and the largest value you can't form is m 
times, we're going to put m minus 2 in there, plus p times m minus 1. So let's just recap what we did here. So a plus m minus 1. So this is actually in a group. It can't take, it can't be 0, can't be 1, can't be 2, dot, dot, dot. It can't be m minus 2 because if it is m minus 2, then a would have to be negative 1 and it can't be negative 1. So if a is 0, then it can be m minus 1. That is possible and it can be any value after that. So that means that when we put m minus 2 in here, we're going to get the largest value. We're going to get the Frobenius number. So when we put m minus 2 in here, we got m times m minus 2 plus p and times m minus 2, m minus 1. Okay, so then if we evaluate this, we're going to get m squared minus 2m plus pm minus p. And remember, we'll let p equal p is up here. p is n minus m. So we, here again, I'll write it up here so we can see both at the same time. m squared minus 2m plus pm minus p. We'll substitute where the p's belong. So m squared minus 2m plus n minus m, m minus n minus m. So it looks messy right now, but we'll just clean it up. So we're going to get m squared minus 2m plus mn minus m squared. Right here we have m squared minus n plus m. So this, luckily, m squared, m squared cancel out. And we're going to have mn um, minus n. And this is a negative 2m and a positive m. So it becomes negative m. So we found that the Frobenius number is given by mn minus m minus n.